Hi, a busy solopreneur, self-employed person or small business owner. If so, in this video, I will show you how to define processes ready to be delegated in the safest, easiest and fastest way that we suggest to our students. This way is a perfect, optimal to define tasks, projects, activities, processes. Uh, ready to be delegated efficiently. We use uh, in our company, and we will show you in this video in the slides uh, in a few minutes, the exact uh, map that we created for our full uh, book. Easy is to understand uh, a full book uh, in a simple process. So you can map uh, processes and projects, uh, big, uh, complex projects and uh, processes in a single map, uh, very easy to be understood, uh, quick uh, to be created. This process uh, that we call uh, mapping in 6D is a collection of different uh, uh, mapping uh, systems from uh, all around the web that maybe you've seen around the YouTube. We watched everything. We tested everything. We created uh, our system for our company and it was so powerful. So we decided to, to implement in other companies. But before uh, going into it, uh, I'm Pietro Mappers from Success Mapper and we help uh, easy solopreneurs, self-employed people, small business owners to better manage their business, free their working time, how with uh, optimal processes, uh, business structure, delegation that is efficient and uh, profitable. We implemented in our company and uh, we were able to delegate as much as 82% of the working owner working time to be able in this way to manage a business with uh, one hour working time. Yes, I will go right into the slides. Please like, subscribe and comment uh, any question, any suggestion for new new video. This is a small part, is a very important part, but a small part of the full picture. It is our full framework. Stay in the till the end of the video to know how to watch the full framework for free. Okay, so we'll get uh, right into the situation that we are trying to solve. There is uh, three starting uh, cases. There is uh, one case where you are too busy because you have maybe a side job, a side income, um, another uh, business uh, going on, uh, a lot of patients, hobbies, uh, a family that you care of, of course. And so you are too busy and there, there is uh, too many things going on because the, you have a family and all the other things. Um, there is the second situation that, that is that you have a business that is going really well. Um, the first success uh, right there. So it's growing fast. You need to step up, uh, stay up uh, with the industry, uh, the, the trends, the opportunities that uh, are growing uh, to stay up with competition too. And so too many things are going on, too much is going on because uh, uh, there is so much opportunity. And then there is the third case is where not necessarily your company is super successful. It might going, be going good in the future, but right now, Simply, you have too many things to do, too many things to test, too many things to try. There is some traction, so there is some success, some revenue, some profit. It's not optimal, but uh, there is so many things that uh, during the time um, and during the iteration of your improvement of your business um, are added to your business processes. And so there is so many things uh, going on uh, to step up uh, you you find yourself that there is too much things to to maintain right so these are the three cases and all of these three cases bring it to the same situation that is that you have too much going on so basically this is the starting situation there is too much things going on and so you you find yourself that you became too busy there is too many activities and too many tasks projects and roles to maintain there is too much stuff you you cannot uh, focus on growth uh, growing revenue growing profits there is too much going on so this is a, a bad situation why because you cannot uh, focus on what you want like the family the business growth uh, uh, the strategy or whatever you need to do this is the point where to be able to manage all the things going on and start to delegate uh, to free your working time you need to be able to uh, have uh, control on everything in the most simple way possible. Uh, to do that, uh, you need to be able to simplify your company, all the processes, and define what's going on and uh, all the important things, uh, uh, removing all the less important things, uh, 
and be able to describe your business, uh, we say in with our framework, uh, um, to be able to simplify your company in one pages, to be able to simplify marketing in one page, simplify a process in one page, simplify operations in one page, everything in one page. It's not easy. It takes, uh, takes effort and time, but it's the thing that you need to do to be able to manage so many processes. Uh, the bigger your company, the more you need to focus on the important thing only and uh, manage uh, maybe one department win with one metric or uh, have uh, the view of uh, the full business uh, model of your company in one page uh, so that you can control, uh, supervise and be aware of what's happening every time. Uh, so simplification is uh, the, um, the focus here. You need to have clarity and simplification to control so many things uh, going on so to be able also to delegate uh, afterwards. And the benefits of doing this, uh, I, I, I have a small list here, I have uh, five. The benefits is uh, that you are uh, more efficient, you have full control, aware of everything going on. Uh, you quickly can improve the processes and what's happening in your company, correct improve make more profitable better working and uh, you have also the freedom to get delegate because you cannot delegate if the processes are not simplified efficient and profitable to delegate you need the clarity that's the focus here process mapping is basically a tool that big companies use to to give clarity to their uh, processes to simplify so that they are able to be delegated as you can see here on the screen, Clarity is giving you awareness of the inefficiencies and uh, this is giving you um, the ability, the possibility to make what is inefficient, efficient. And when you create processes that are efficient, you become more profitable and you have processes ready, as you can uh, read in the left corner below processes that are ready to be delegated because they are ready to scale, optimized, and also optimized before scale. And that's very important. If you want to grow your company and scale with delegation or with in investing in your company, you need to be able to have uh, profitable uh, processes uh, in the first place. Because if you have inefficient and not profitable processes, you can grow them, but they will be still inefficient and not profitable. So first, you need to make them efficient and profitable. And then when they're optimized, you can scale them to the moon and make a lot of money in that way. This is very important. So a process mapping is basically the tool that is giving you clarity. Uh, as we've seen before, clarity is giving you more profit and processes ready to scale. Process mapping is giving you this more profit in the processes because the processes are more efficient and the ready processes ready to scale. And these two things, more profitable and ready to scale processes, give you the opportunity to delegate efficiently. That is what we want to have. So before delegating or while you're delegating, because the two things go together one, when you delegate, you needed to create the processes that are very efficient. And that's why you use a process mapping. Uh, process mapping is, gi is giving you clarity. Process mapping is also giving you these other benefits. Easy to explain around the company. If you map uh, processes correctly, you can explain processes very quickly and very efficiently. You can delegate efficiently. You can delegate at low cost. There is a passive processes that can work without you. Uh, processes became set and forget because if you uh, make them really good, they self-solve problems in themselves and uh, it's easy to monitor and control them. So maybe sometime you can create processes with one or two checkpoints to be sure if you want that someone can check processes to work efficiently. It's something normal. I mean, I'm talking here like it's something new, but in big companies, this is something uh, normal. What I see is mostly that in small companies with uh, people in experience with delegation, 
basically they are not doing it, it because they are, don't know how to do it. But uh, small companies should do this too. And if you don't do this, uh, you will never have uh, full control at scale. But uh, even at uh, not at scale, you will never have a full control, efficient control. So maybe you will uh, be able to control a small business, but uh, with a lot of more effort and wasted uh, time. The processes will not be efficient, as you can read on the screen, and uh, it will be expensive to delegate. Some people don't delegate uh, also because it's too expensive to delegate because processes are done in uh, the wrong way. You can delegate the same process to a super experienced, uh, expensive person if uh, the process is not efficient, or you can delegate the same process to um, inexperienced, low cost, uh, uh, low experience uh, uh, person. This is, for example, what Ford uh, has done. Ford was able to delegate the, the manufacturing of the car to inexperienced, uh, lower wage people um, with the maximum efficiencies instead of uh, delegating it to um, amazing artisan with amazing uh, craftsmanship. He was able to do that. And in this way, he made uh, car available on the mass market, made more profit, uh, and was also able to pay the low wage uh, worker a lot, a lot, a lot more. So it's a benefit not only for you, but also for who is working with you. And uh, without process mapping, is it possible to improve and remove uh, steps? And um, sometimes there is things that uh, we can stop doing. And also competition will crash you because if you don't do things correctly, someone other could arrive and destroy you. So what we show here is the best way that we defined um, for um, do process mapping. And this mapping in 6D is uh, our own way that we defined after analyzing so many different ways of mapping and testing different ways of mapping in our company. The benefits of mapping in 6D is that uh, you need uh, less work to define the processes. It's easier to understand, it's safest because uh, who's doing the work uh, has uh, a clear, has a lot of clarity, simplification, as we said before, and makes everything so easy. And uh, it's very professional. Um, look-wise and effect-wise is flexible because, because you can change uh, easily and uh, it's simple and uh, you have uh, so many infos in less space. This uh, is uh, also the way we are able to summarize uh, in entire business model in an entire uh, chapter of your, uh, of your business with one page. <laughs> and the 6D stays for uh, six dimensions. So in a map, uh, you will find the six dimensions. Uh, there is a written version of mapping in 6D. There can be uh, the text in the map, but also sometimes it's uh, like a, a connected uh, document that we attach to the map. So a different format for the same concept, because sometimes it's easier to read, sometimes it's easier to watch a video, sometimes it's easier to have a map. Um, then there is an oblique flow, um, links to the submaps, uh, shapes, color, and swim lanes. Anyway, stay with me. I know it's so long. Stay with me till the end also, because there will be the uh, bonus dimension at the end. I also will explain to you uh, how to know what is after and before the mapping in 6D, because uh, mapping in 6D is great. There is also the final uh, bonus uh, that uh, we included uh, later in the slides, but uh, there is something happening before and after to efficiently using mapping in 6D. At the end, we explain to you what it is, how to go deeper into it. <laughs> but please stay with me, I cannot explain everything now. Uh, mapping in CD. For example, here you see uh, the mapping of uh, an entire book because we have a book, uh, um, 
I'll, maybe I will link it in the description, whatever, it's not important. We summarized the entire process uh, in our book here in this map. The book is, I think, is 150 pages. We summarize all the process here. This is the how much power is mapping in 6D. You can summarize so many information in this image. It's incredible. Um, multi, multiple dimensions, six dimensions. Also, sometimes you can include a video for uh, the assistant based on the way that they, you are delegating. Uh, anyway, um, let's focus on the 6Ds. Uh, the first is the written version. Uh, usually we attach to the map a bullet point in Google Doc or Google Sheet. I prefer personally Google Sheet, but Sheets, but uh, you can use both. And then a written, um, and then uh, also a very important thing, uh, this is not done from you. Um, Sometimes we give the video or the map and we let the person that is doing the process writing it down, because this is a way to learn for them and a way for you to delegate mapping in 6D. So this is also why it's so cool because you can uh, in this way delegate the mapping to other people while they learn. Okay, so this is the first, uh, first uh, D. The second D is uh, the oblique flow. Every time you write a mapping, uh, a map in 6D, uh, we suggest to have uh, a standard uh, flow. As you can see, there is uh, the white arrow is the oblique flow. So it starts from the top uh, left corner and ends in the bottom right corner. So it is a standard flow so that it is easier to understand the process. And then there is uh, um, the Z flow. Basically, is uh, if we divide the oblique flow in uh, um, in a uh, different arrow, you see a Z flow. There is a um, light blue line going to the right, yellow line going in the line below to the left. In this way, there is uh, multiple Zs that uh, end up in the same place uh, in, at the end of the oblique flow. Uh, this is a um, uh, very, this is a uh, what we think is the best flow that you need to include in the, your mapping, especially if you're a small business owner, a solopreneur or self-employed person, you want to map, this is a very efficient way to do everything and keep standard, keep it standard so that people working for you know what to expect when they look at the map. Links to the soup maps. Okay, so this comes back to the concept of summarizing everything in one page. Albert Tyson says, um, you really know well a topic when you are able to explain it to a kid. This is the same concept. You really know well your process when you are able to explain it with one image or one page. Okay, everything needs to be in one page. If the process is so complex, then you put links to submaps. So, for example, each part, uh, each black uh, um, square here, uh, you could uh, link uh, these parts uh, to submaps. Um, if you do it digitally, you, you uh, the assistant who is reading this process could, can click on this uh, part of the map and get a link that goes directly to a submap. And the submap needs to have the same rule for mapping in 6D. So summarize mapping in one page. And then if there is more to explain, link inside the, the one page map to another page where you explain the process in one page. So what we try is to have everything in one page. I don't care if it's page inside a page inside a page, but this is very useful also because it keeps your mind um, on a macro level, a macro picture. So you are aware of the level of the importance of each information. So everything on this page is of similar importance. 
and similar uh, skills usually. If there is something going further in details, there is another page of concept of the same department, of the same topic. Um, I mean, I cannot go too much further into it, but this is, I hope you understand. Maybe we will make uh, other videos about that. It is important summarizing one page and use uh, links to submaps if you need to include more uh, more information. That's why mapping is, is so flexible. You can include the supports and other things, of course. Um, anyway, here are uh, um, a reminder, stay with me till the end because we have a bonus and also we'll show you the tools that we use to do this. All free, all free, 100% free. Uh, mapping in 60, I mean, free tools. <laughs> we share for free the free tools so you can do it uh, right away. Um, shapes. Shapes are very important. Uh, shapes, um, in this map, actually, we have only two shapes. But uh, you can have different shapes for different uh, activities in one map. So, for example, there is a, the orange one is a, a decision shape. Is either yes or no. Um, so you put the orange uh, shape like that. The black one is basically an activity, a part of the process. But if you check a process mapping shapes on Google, you can see different type of shapes that you can use. Uh, we suggest to use um, multiple shapes. There are some shapes that are used more often, some shapes that are used less often, whatever. We will make a video maybe about that to, to go further in details. We don't have time here. Colors. Colors is very important. The colors are underrated because uh, um, colors help your brain to understand, to divide, to order everything. It's not for beauty. It's also for beauty, but especially for concept. If you print this page in black and white, you are doing. Uh, you are missing one of the six Ds. I don't like black and white uh, in mapping because you are wasting information or wasting speed to communicate and to be aware. So if uh, in one year you go back here, I want you to look at this picture and instantly be aware of the different color. So here, the color I say are saying to you that there are four departments and there are two departments, the blue and the pink, uh, with uh, two sub-departments. And also the color tell to you that there is like a yes and no line and there is a decision mark that is orange. Okay, so quickly you already have uh, four or five information that are really of maximum importance. Okay, and swim lanes. That's uh, uh, one that uh, in, when we published the book, we didn't include it, but now we added it. Swim lanes basically is department. So uh, we take the task because you could make... Uh, like uh, a list of all activities in order, and there will be a flow of activities. But if you put swim lanes, you can create departments, and that is necessary. It makes it so easy to understand, uh, so easy to, to get back into it uh, and uh, communicate it. So swim lanes, basically there is a, a line for every department or every topic or every concept or every person. Swim lanes, you can you can divide, divide in swim lanes by people, department, project, um, maybe uh, location, um, topic. For example, here we are summarizing the book. So there is four chapters. And each in chapters, as the chapter two and chapter three have two sub swim lanes. So this is how we suggest. And also use colors. As you see, swim lanes, there is a, a pink purple swim lane, a green swim lane, a blue, light blue, uh, dark blue swim lane, and a gray swim lane. This is what you should do. Bonus video tutorial. Um, okay, it is, um, depends because some companies don't use videos, uh, they use like written version, but uh, 
Sometimes it's more for a uh, um, documentation and uh, also for a low reason to protect themselves from uh, from. I mean, they communicated the, the the processes, but most of the time it's so hard to understand, and workers sometimes don't even read. The, if you are, if they have the possibility to not read, they avoid it to read because there is so many words that is hard to understand. It's a waste of time sometimes. So video tutorial, we suggest to include video tutorials to explain because the video explain things much faster. So what we suggest actually, this is the bonus video tutorial. Include the video tutorial if you're able, like with Loom, you can create a um, free Loom video of five minutes to quickly explain what you're talking about. But what we suggest is to have a three format video, graphical map, and text map. The video, uh, the, the graphical map is the main, main process that you are doing. The video is a quick introduction to the, to the map. And the written a, a, a version usually is a written by who is doing the work the assistant, VA specialist, uh, the manager that is doing the work is writing it in bullet points in or in another format because while he's writing it, he understands it and also is for easy reference because sometimes some information, if you need to get some quick information, you can go to the written version. Sometimes you need to go to the map and sometimes to the video. But anyway, you, you have the freedom of all three. And this is a bonus. It is very important. It reduces time and is very efficient. Okay. And this is the last um, bonus. Is the free tools that we use. Uh, we are not aff affiliated to any of them, also because they are all free. <laughs> Mapping in 6D, basically we use uh, five free tools. There are some uh, expensive tools that you can include, like uh, Miro for mapping, uh, um, Microsoft uh, Word, uh, Microsoft Excel. You can use, uh, I mean, Vimeo is, is expensive if you publish too much. Uh, YouTube is free. We use YouTube. Uh, Zoom is free. Draw.io, you write the maps. We use it because it's free. Is connected to Google and uh, is uh, powerful. It's free. So if you want to go free, there is this. There is a Miro is the best if you want to pay probably, but this is very good. Uh, then Google Sheet it's, is good also because it's very, you can uh, keep it, uh, um, you can share easily with uh, all your team members and connect uh, multiple Google Sheets um to each other so that you can create like a master library of processes in that way with the links to the youtube videos tutorials uh, of the written recipe some people uh, like google doc to write the bullet points uh, written version of the processes and then there is youtube youtube um we use youtube to um to publish uh, the training videos um, either Loom, you can also use uh, Loom, but there is a five minutes limit. YouTube, there is no limit, and uh, it's good because uh, you can uh, make a video private, uh, sorry, not private, unlisted, or uh, share by email. And in this way, you can create a library for, uh, for uh, your team for free. Vimeo is better because you have more. Uh, control, but it's a, it costs some money. So YouTube, if you want to go free, um, Vimeo is if you want to expand, to spend. And Zoom is the easiest, one of the easiest way to record the videos with high quality, unlimited length. Um, if you don't, if you record, if you create a call by yourself, you can record the video screen with the webcam, like I'm doing right now. Right now, for example, I'm using uh, Zoom because sometimes uh, I like to use it. It's also good quality of the audio. Anyway, yes, these are the free tools. 
Okay, so uh, in future, probably we also make, um, this has some additional information, make a video for each part of the mapping in 6D. So to stay updated, I suggest you to turn on the bell, subscribe and turn on the bell on YouTube, on the channel. So you get notified, also other information. Um, this is, uh, as we said before, mapping comes into the full framework, is part of the full framework. There is things coming before and this comes after all. Uh, mapping, for example, is in um, included in the task clustering, in the solopreneur delegation, in the structure for small business only, uh, in define where and what to term arbitrage. Um, yeah, so in the step one, three, four, six, maybe also in the five, you can include mapping is part of this framework. Uh, that is, you can watch for free all the full framework. Uh, there is a video training. Uh, so if you want to understand uh, when exactly to do it, uh, to know more about that, uh, everything uh, around the mapping, because mapping is a part of delegation, is the starting point, but it's not everything. Uh, there is the free training video in the description and you can check it is an amazing video that explain to you the full topic of delegation, how, how our framework is working and the benefit of that framework is that you can make uh, possibly as much as 82% passive uh, business. And, um, yeah. And if you are not ready to take action, uh, we also created a, a playlist that we will link uh, in the description. And uh, also in some minutes, uh, we'll talk more about that in this video. Stay with us. Uh, on YouTube, uh, we created this playlist uh, about delegation with tools, tips, training. We suggest you to, to check it. It's, it's free, but super high valuable. A lot of parts of that video you can implement right away and make your business decrease your working time. So I hope you enjoyed the slides. I know it was uh, so many information. Uh, please uh, rewatch it uh, a couple of times. It's very, very important for you to um, embed this information in your brain to release and release and release and maybe take notes, maybe uh, watch uh, the video, maybe listen only the audio while you do other things. Rewatch it multiple times. Is that we found that it is one of the best way to learn. And like, uh, subscribe, and uh, comment with questions and video suggestions is very important. And for the full framework, uh, there will be like uh, a link below. So if you want to go further with this, there will be the full framework video with the link below. There is also a full um, framework PDF that you can download for free. And then we also have a, a big delegation playlist here on YouTube linked around here uh, with a collection of best tool and delegation tips to implement right now your company to free your working time as quick as possible. With as little in one week uh, implementing some of this stuff, you can really work at 10%, 20% less. It's very, very powerful. Go for it. Don't uh, wait. It's, it can make really a big change in your company.